fellow Ambazonians. Yesterday bore witness to yet another thwarted attempt by the occupying forces to impose a celebration we scornfully recall as a day of shame in our nation's honors. I speak of the fascia observance of February 11th, deceitfully labeled as Youth Day. Despite the relentless efforts of La Republique du Cameroon over the past seven years and since our declaration of sovereignty restoration, they sought to enforce their mandates across our land, yearning for a spectacle of compliance. Yet, our indomitable and liberty-craving population defied them once more on 11 February. Allow me to extend profound gratitude on behalf of the interim government and all freedom-seeking Ambazonians in the diaspora to our civilian population on ground zero. Your adherence to the lockdown and boycott of that sham of a new day equals the spirit of resistance that, de that defines our struggle. As we reflect on this occasion, we must ask ourselves, what significance, what significance does New Day hold in the nation where hope eludes our youth? In the land where education leads to mere street vending or SIM card vending? What relevance, ladies and gentlemen, does New Day hold in a country where the elderly refuse to yield, they refuse to retire, they exploit the economy and cling to power through bribery and corruption, leaving the youth in a perpetual despair. Show me opportunities for our youth. Show me infrastructure for their advancement. Then and then we might entertain the notion of celebrating New Day. In Cameroon, the political elite subjugate and corrupt the youth to maintain their grip on power. We witness it in Nkambe. What is there to celebrate on Youth Day in Cameroon? Nothing, zero to show for it. And we shall never allow such travesty to occur in a free and independent Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia never again. Fellow Ambazonians, as we reconcile with the reality that this war may endure, we must not misconstrue victory through mere lockdowns and ghost towns. Lockdowns serve as a symbolic gesture of protest, allowing you, the people, to express vehement opposition to the occupiers' imposed ceremonies on our land. However, we must not wield lockdowns as the sole instrument of our liberation. After seven years of strife, we no longer view prolonged lockdowns as tenable solutions, except where absolutely imperative. Prolonged lockdowns exact a toll on our populace, burdening families, stifling livelihoods, and exacerbating hardships. We meticulously consider the duration of lockdowns opting for a three-day measure over a week-long ordeal. Any lockdown that fails to resonate with the people serves no purpose but to stroke egos and indulge in brinksmanship, a practice we vehemently condemned. Throughout the duration of this conflict, lockdowns and ghost towns remain integral components of our resistance. They embody your collective dissent against colonial oppression. They signify passive resistance to the regime in Yaoundé and the international community that fails to listen to all of us. Ghost towns convey a message to our oppressors 
giving the means, we would bear arms like our restoration fighters. All of us would bear arms like the restoration fighters. Despite the regime's efforts to quash ghost towns, let it be known, let it be known, it has failed and ghost towns are here to stay. To the valiant restoration fighters of Ambazonia, I extend fraternal salutations. To the field marshals, the generals and commanders, your unwavering, your unwavering resolve deserves accolades. You, including our foot soldiers, enabled the shutdown of our territory against La Republique du Cameroon's purported youth day. You have thwarted La Republique du Cameroon's narrative of normalcy and peace. And let it be known that in this war, in this war, ladies and gentlemen, peace, peace is not, peace is not our pursuit, our goal. Justice is our crusade and our objective or goal. Peace, empty or devoid of justice, offers no resolution to our plight. It is a hollow, a empty and empty gesture. We demand rectification of all injustices through dialogue or negotiation, not hollow promises. Fellow comrades, yesterday's events unveiled tragic incidents in certain, re in, in certain communities where cohesion marred the attempted celebration of uh, February 11th. We mourn the burning of schools and the bloodshed in Nkambe. We hold Ingala Gerard accountable for the carnage in Nkambe. Like a shepherd leading lambs to slaughter, Ingala Gerard enticed the population with blood money, paving the way to their tragedy. Ingala Gerard's actions resulted in the loss of life and injury. We must be held, he must be held liable. And if Yawande is sincere about combating corruption, Ngala Gerard should face justice. He must answer for his crimes or face exile in La Republique du Cameroon for life. Ngala Gerard is henceforth persona non grata in Ambazonia, and restoration fighters are tasked with ensuring justice prevails. That said, let the events in Nkambe serve as a stark reminder that lockdowns and ghost towns demand strict adherence. We do not spring surprises with lockdown announcements. They are disseminated well in advance before the day. For as long as this conflict continues, Lockdowns in ghost towns will not, again, will not be transient. They will endure. Let us not imperi lives and families on lockdown and ghost towns days. To La Republique du Cameroon, I must state that it is imperative that we sit down like mature and responsible people to address the long-standing grievances and injustices faced by the people of Ambazonia if La Republique du Cameroon hopes to achieve peace and stability in their own country. We have already endured, endured this for seven years and counting. For far too long, far too long, the authorities in Cameroon have ignored the legitimate concerns and aspirations of the Ambazonian people, opting instead for cohesion and half-hearted attempts at resolution. The recent events surrounding the Bulge Youth Day of February 11 serve as a poignant reminder that the people of Ambazonia will not, again, will not be silenced or cohesed into submission. Despite the assertions from the government, La Republique du Cameroon's government, that no mercy and peace have returned to Ambazonia, the reality on the ground tells a different story. 
The boycott of Youth Day festivities by Ambazonians underscores their unwavering commitment to justice and self-determination. It is abundantly clear that without addressing the root causes of the conflict, through peace, we remain elusive. Ambazonians refuse to accept the annexation and occupation imposed upon them by the Cameroonian government. Justice in the eyes of the Ambazonian people begins with genuine dialogue and negotiation that acknowledges the historical and political realities of our nation. It necessitates the recognition of Ambazonia as a separate sovereign entity entitled to self-governance, self control over its own resources, and the right to elect its own representatives. It is only through sincere engagement at the negotiation table that we can hope to achieve a resolution that is equitable and just for all parties involved. All parties here referring to La Republique du Cameroon and Ambazonia. The Cameroonian government must come to terms, come to terms with the fact that military force and oppression has failed and will not lead to victory, but rather perpetuate a circle of violence and suffering upon their own people and the people of Ambazonia. Ambazonians have demonstrated time and again their resilience and determination in the face of adversity. We will not tire nor relent in our pursuit of justice and freedom. There are millions, literally millions, of young men and women in Ambazonia who stand ready to defend their homeland with their own lives if need be. All they ask for are AK-47s, AK-47s. Just to emphasize on the point again, when we ask of justice for Ambazonia, we are referring to the fundamental need to address the root causes of the conflict through genuine dialogue and negotiation. It is imperative to recognize that Cameroon was historically comprised of two separate sovereign states and that the annexation and occupation of Ambazonia by Cameroon must be acknowledged and rectified. Justice for Ambazonia means respecting the right of self-determination, allowing the people of Ambazonia to govern themselves, manage their own resources, and establish a government that is truly representative of their will. This includes the election of governors and mayors by the people, rather than their appointment by external authorities. The path to lasting peace in Cameroon and Ambazonia lies in acknowledging these fundamental truths. If the authorities in Cameroon are willing to come to terms with the just demands of the Ambazonian people, it is within our reach to forge a future where both countries can coexist as good neighbors, engaging in mutually beneficial trade and cooperation. The establishment of a fair and equitable relationship between Cameroon and Ambazonia is not only desirable, but also entirely achievable through sincere dialogue and uh, meaningful action. It is therefore crucial for the authorities in Cameroon to understand that the use of coercion, the use of force, and the use of violence to suppress the legitimate aspirations of the Ambazonian people will only lead to further suffering and instability both in their country and in Ambazonia. The, perpetua the perpetuation of violence and the belief that victory can be achieved through the oppression of the Ambazonian people is a fallacy that will not lead to a sustainable resolution of the conflict. The pursuit of justice and the recognition of the rights of the Ambazonian people 
are the only viable parts, ladies and gentlemen, to a peaceful and prosperous future for both Cameroon and the people of Ambazonia. It is not in the best interest of La Republic du Cameroon to prolong this conflict any further. The continuation of the hostilities only serves to deepen the wounds of division and sow the seeds of future discord between the two countries. I implore, therefore, the authorities in Yaoundé to heed this call for justice and take the meaningful steps towards a peaceful resolution of the conflict in Ambazonia. Only through mutual respect, understanding, and compromise can we hope to build a future where Cameroon and Ambazonia can coexist as good neighbors united in prosperity and shared humanity. Again, this came to you from your comrade in arms, Chris Anwan. Thanks for listening.